good day. Let's take a look at your activity nucleic acids and heredity. Okay, and so with this, please note that your nucleic acids, they are the fundamental constituent of a living cell. And yes, they are found inside the nuclei. Okay, and so with this, they serve as a genetic storehouses and the carriers of genetic information okay and so again these ones are located inside the nucleus okay and so please know that there are two types of nucleic acid you have your ribonucleic acid and your deoxyribonucleic acids of course all of your organisms they have all living organisms they contain dna again and so this is their genetic makeup okay and so with this for our activity we made use of we made use of your strawberries. The activity, we prepared a DNA buffer. Okay, and so the buffer is made of placing 5 ml of dishwashing liquid into a 250 ml beaker and then added 1.5 grams of salt and 5 grams of sodium bicarb. And then after that, you mix and then add 120 ml of distilled water okay and so in when you prepared your sample okay and so we made use of two two strawberries okay and so we uh what you call this cut thinly and then place it in a mortar and then after that we added 14 ml of distilled water and 6 ml of dna buffer okay and so then after that you mash until a homogeneous mixture is uh, produced and then after that you filter using it two layers of cos okay and so of course the filtrate that will be your sample for the dna extraction okay and so your purpose here is to what you call this liberate your the purpose of mashing and then adding your what you call this your soap here is to expose or to uh, what you call this yes to expose your nucleic acid present in uh, the nucleus okay and so in your dna extraction made use of the 2 ml of sample and placing it in a test tube after that you added 1 ml of dna buffer solution and then you gently invert and then let it stand for five minutes. After the time, you added 2 ml of, you inclined the tube and added 2 ml of very cold 70% ethyl alcohol. Okay, and so, and then of course, after that, your aim here should be you have two layers. Okay, and so two layers being your alcohol should be on the top layer okay and so and then of course you need to observe the interface and that is where accordingly you can find your dna okay and so supposed to be okay and so yes what is the purpose of your soap here this one will dissolve the cell membrane your salt will break the bonds present and then your ethanol will precipitate okay and so please note that your dna accordingly is least soluble in cold ethanol that is why we utilize the ethanol that is placed in a ethanol that is placed in a ice okay and so yes uh after adding your what you call this your very cold ethanol okay and so you should be able to see a what you call this <clears throat> you should be able to observe the uh interface with some sorts of jelly like uh jelly-like substance present and then if there is you we need to spool it out and test for uh and test okay and so yes let's take a look at this one okay and so this one should be supposed to be meron po sana tayong ma-obtain na ganito okay and so for this one okay and so this one should be placed in another test tube and then be tested further okay and so let's take a look at this test you have here your dish test okay and so your dish diphenylamine test okay and so this is a test for dna and rna accordingly okay and so you have your reagent is your dish diphenylamine reagent okay and so please note that a blue solution will give you a dna of course your sample would be a dna or rna sample okay and so your sample should be from 
uh, the spool, okay? And so your blue solution, if you produce blue solution, that is the the substance present is DNA. And if you obtained a green solution, then the sample is contains ribonucleic acid. If uh, the solution is clear after adding dish diphenylamine reagent, then there is accordingly no nucleic acid. Okay, and so accordingly for this one, the intensity of blue color that is produced corresponds to the amount of DNA that is present. And please note that this test detects your sugar deoxyribose that is present in DNA. Again, and so your dish diphenylamine reagent or your dish diphenylamine test, it will detect your deoxyribose, giving you a blue solution if DNA is present and green solution if RNA is present. And if there is no nucleic acid, it will give you a clear solution. Okay? And then please note that in hydrolysis of your nucleic acid, okay, and so your nucleic acids will be, uh, if you hydrolyze your nucleic acid, okay, and so it will give you nucleic acid, nucleoside and phosphoric acid. If you further uh, hydrolyze your nucleoside, it will give you your sugar and your nitrogenous bases, your purine and your pyrimidine bases. Okay? And so please note your dish test again. Okay, and so and then you have your fuel gen test. These are tests for the components of your nucleic acid. Your fuel gen test, this one will produce a red color in the presence of the oxyribose. Okay, and so this you your fuel gen test utilizes hydrochloric acid and reduced fushin accordingly. Okay, and so in fuel gen test, okay, and so again. In the presence of the oxyribose, it will give a red color. That is why in the presence of ribonucleic, the oxyribonucleic acid, it will give a red color. Again, DNA will give a red color in fuel gen test. Your arsenal test. Okay, and so for your arsenal test, this is a test for your pentosis. It will give you, it will give a negative test for the oxyribose, okay? And so for the arsenal test, the positive result is a green color, okay? And so green color, okay? And so that is for your arsenal test. Moving on, your Wheeler-Johnson test, this one is for pyrimidines, okay? And so your Wheeler-Johnson test, this is for pyrimidines, no? Okay, and so please note that after the addition of bromine, Bromine water, okay, and so the sample will turn green. And then add barium hydroxide to produce purple. Okay, and so cytosine and uracil will give a positive result for this. And your thymine will give negative test. Again, and so in, in Wheeler-Johnson test, if cytosine and uracil is present, they will give a positive result. But if thymine is present only, it will give a negative one. Okay, and then your muric side test. This one is a test for your purines. It utilizes hydrochloric acid and ammonia. Okay, and so this is a test for purines and it utilizes hydrochloric acid and ammonia. You have here, it will produce a purple color in the presence of uric acid. Okay, and so please note that santine produces a yellow color upon and then upon heating it will give you a red color. Again, for your muric side test, this one is for your purines. Okay? And then your ammonium molybdate test, this one is a test for your phosphate ions. Okay? And so phosphate ions, this one is located present also in your DNA. Okay? And so with this, then your reagents are, you have your nitric acid and your ammonium molybdate. For your ammonium molybdate test, for your phosphate ions, so your phosphate ions, again, they are present in your deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay? And so, <clears throat> the reagents utilized in your ammonium molybdate test, you have nitric acid and ammonium molybdate. And the positive result is your bright yellow precipitate. In the presence of your phosphate ions, it will give you a bright yellow precipitate. Okay? And so, if a phosphate is absent, then it will give you it will not give you a bright yellow color, bright yellow precipitate. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at your central dogma. Okay, and so please note that your genetic, in your central dogma, you have here your genetic information flows only in one direction from DNA to RNA to protein or RNA directly to 
protein accordingly. Okay, and so you have here on DNA, of course, you have there your transcription, translation, and your protein synthesis for this. Okay, and so in your central dogma. Please note that your, what you call this, in the production, in your replication, you have a uh, in the replication, transcription, and the translation all of your, uh, in the replication, transcription, and translation processes, you have accordingly proofreading. Okay, and so you have proofreading function of your DNA polymerase during your uh, replication process. You have here for your mismatch repair. Okay, and so this one is utilized for spontaneous ones. And then your nucleotide excision. This one is utilized for damage bases by chemicals. Okay, and so mismatch, that is for spontaneous error. Nucleotide excision, that is for damage bases by chemicals. And then your base excision, that is for damage base accordingly. Okay, and so that is for your proofreading, uh, what you call this, that is, those are mechanisms to avoid mistakes in your trans in your replication, translation, transcription, and translation, translation. Okay, and so please note that in these cases, your, uh, you do not, uh, your DNA, okay, and so you don't want, you do not want errors, okay, and so in your genetic code in your genetic information that is why you have the rest the, a lot of what you call this mechanisms to prevent to what you call this to remove errors and to prevent having errors accordingly okay and so that is for your central dogma okay and so please note that in translation you have here your messenger rna that has this codons okay and so that has your codons of course your codons they are triplet of bases present in the messenger rna that will specify an amino acid okay and so examples of this i mean this amino acids this 64 sorry the 64 codons are presented in this table okay that your cuu will specify your leucine will code for your leucine your ccc will specify your proline okay and so your guu will specify for your amino acid valine and the rest okay and so please know that you have 64 codons all in all one of which is your start codon which is your aug that will code for your that will specify your methionine and then three of uh, this one, three of the 64 codons do not code for a specific amino acid, but because they are uh, regarded as your termination codons or your stop codons, namely you have your UAA, UAG, and your UGA accordingly. Okay, and so these are your uh, codons present in your messenger RNA. What about in your tRNA? You have there your anti codons. Naman. Okay, and so let's take a look at your illustration of your deoxyribonucleotide and your ribonucleotide. Okay, and so for the composition of your nucleotide, you have here your 5-carbon sugar. In your DNA, you have your deoxyribose and then your phosphate and then your nitrogenous bases. Okay, and so please note that your deoxyribose at the second position, second carbon position, there is no OH present. Okay, and so you only have hydrogen here. Okay, and so please note again that at the second carbon position, there is no OH. You only have H in deoxyribose. Okay, and so that that is the difference between your DN, your deoxy and then your ribose. Okay, and so let's take a look. In your RNA nucleotide, this is for your RNA nucleotide, your ribose, a 5-carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and your nitrogenous bases. Please note that your ribose is otherwise known as oxyribose because at the second carbon position, you have an attached OH group here. Okay, and so comparing it with your deoxyribose. Okay, and so that is the difference between the two. Okay, and so I guess we will end here for your nucleic acids.